Jesse Jones, retiring Secretary of Commerce, testifies before the Senate Commerce Committee on a resolution by Senator Walter F. George to divorce the RFC Lending Agency from the Department of Commerce. The nomination of Henry A. Wallace as Commerce Secretary brings this statement from Mr. Jones. The man who holds the vast responsibilities contained in the RFC should be one of proven and sound business experience. He should be able to attract men of sound judgment with business knowledge gained from experience in business. The country has a right to expect a man in this important place whose philosophy is in line with the principles which have made our country great. Then Mr. Wallace has a chance to testify for himself. After explaining his views on the multi-billion dollar Reconstruction Finance Corporation and his hopes and plans for post-war days, he defends his ability to hold both the jobs and outlines his policies, backed by Senator Claude Pepper. The former vice president then has this to say about the RFC when he takes office. If the Congress doesn't feel that the powers of the RFC should be exercised in such a way as to carry out the objectives I have set forth here today, then I respectfully urge the Congress to take the RFC out from under the control of the Department of Commerce. For I tell you here and now that if the RFC is left in the Commerce Department, I will use its powers in the interests of all the American people. Surgeon General Kirk, shown here with Colonel Hobby, head of the wax, has sent out an urgent appeal for 8,000 more wax as our casualty list mount to assist nurses in the 60 general hospitals in this country. They will assist the professionally trained nurse so that her greater skill can be spared for tasks only a nurse can do. The nurses are caring for as many as 40 sick and wounded soldiers instead of the normal quota of 10. To give the men the care they need and help speed them back to health, the aid of more wax are needed immediately, for these men need a woman's touch. The wax will be trained as medical and surgical technicians, such as laboratory experts, surgeons aides, x-ray operators, and druggists among the many jobs. This appeal is urgent. Women soldiers to care for other soldiers whose tasks have already been so much greater. What woman wouldn't take deep pride in nursing a man back to health and speeding him on his way? Apply to any United States Army recruiting office and answer this appeal. Your mission will be one of mercy. The new commander of the American Armed Forces in China, Major General Wiedemeyer, starts on a three-day inspection tour as pictured by the Signal Corps. With the opening of the Lido Burma Road, General Wiedemeyer's troops will get plenty of action. Major General Patrick J. Hurley presents to Chiang Kai-shek his credentials as Ambassador Plenipotentiary to the National Government of the Republic of China. General Hurley will do much to increase the already strong bond between the two allied nations. Anthony Eden takes a look at wartime Athens as top-ranking diplomats and army officers of the Allied powers gather to meet with Winston Churchill in an effort to solve the extremely difficult situation existing between Greek forces engaged in a bitter struggle for national rule. With Archbishop Damascenos, he starts negotiations which resulted in the settlement of differences and brought final peace to Greece. A spark from a welder's torch touches off a raging fire at the Navy Yard in Norfolk, Virginia. Navy men, Coast Guardsmen and civilians aid in fighting the blaze, which quickly spread along the pier and saved adjacent piers and three Navy vessels, which were only slightly damaged. 
More than 90 persons required first aid, and eight were sent to the hospital. Seven powerful fireboats and scores of smaller craft fight the blaze after the land end of the pier was dynamited to prevent the fire from spreading. Near disaster is prevented by quick action. Modern production methods invade the home of Mr. and Mrs. Raymond McLeod, Weymouth, Massachusetts. Necessity being the mother of invention, Papa McLeod dreams up a universal feeder for his hungry triplets. There's pie in the sky and no ration points needed. And Doreen, David, and Donna Lee McLeod appreciate Pop's ingenuity. Well, one day they'll be big enough for beefsteak and mink coats. And then Pop will really have to get busy. Midwest war plants turn out a U.S. version of the deadly robot bomb engine, fantastic weapon of World War II. Among those rushing buzz bombs into production are Henry Ford II and Ray Roush in Dearborn, Michigan. At the Willys plant, Toledo, Ohio, a robot bomb nears completion. Like a super dream of modern warfare, fostered in the imagination of Jules Verne, the robot bomb has visited untold terror upon European civilians. Engineers of the Army Air Forces Air Technical Command inspect the finished product. In a final test on a launching ramp, the buzz bomb takes to the air. Once in flight, the auxiliary launching apparatus is dropped and the 27-foot bomb speeds toward its target. A devastating checkmate to Hitler's war of secret weapons. <laughs> 